Well, good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank the press and the media for being here and, and doing the, the work that you're doing and letting the people across Virginia and this country know uh, of the efforts uh, as we deal with this horrific tragedy. I'd also like to thank all of the, the men and women who have stepped forward and, and been part of this uh, effort as we uh, move forward in, in healing uh, Virginia. They are uh, no doubt dedicated, professional, and compassionate, and for that, uh, I say thank you uh, to uh, Mayor Dyer, who leads this city, uh, to the, our city manager, uh, Dave Hansen, our uh, chief of police, uh, Severa. Uh, thank you for your leadership, as well as the other uh, elected officials during a very, very difficult time here in Virginia Beach. Uh, we continue uh, to focus uh, on these families, on the, the victims, uh, as we said, uh, yesterday, these are 12 individuals who uh, came to work uh, in the city of Virginia Beach uh, uh, thinking that they would go home in the evening and they didn't return and have left a tremendous void uh, in their families and in our community. I have had the opportunity along with some other elected officials to visit our local hospitals. Uh, I'm a doctor. Uh, I served in Desert Storm. I have been in situations such as this and it was important to me to go to our hospitals and, and thank the doctors, the nurses, and the staff. Uh, and I can let you know I also had the opportunity to speak with some of the families. Uh, they send their thanks uh, for the hero heroic uh, deeds that were uh, performed yesterday. And I want to assure you that they are all being well cared for uh, in our local hospitals. Uh, I want to also uh, thank the outpouring of support and love uh, that has come not only from Hampton Roads in Virginia, uh, but across this country. And it just is so, so important uh, as we continue uh, in this healing process. So I would ask all of you that uh, are viewing this uh, today uh, to continue to please lift up Virginia Beach, continue to lift up uh, these victims and their families as we continue this healing process, which will go on not for days, but months and years. So thank you. And I will turn this over to our our Mayor of Virginia Beach, uh, Mayor Bobby Dyer. Mayor? Right here. Uh, thank you, Governor. It's been about 23 hours since this horror was imposed uh, upon the city of Virginia Beach. And let me just say this. We will not be defined by this horror. We will go forward. We are a city of resili resiliency and resolve. The true character of our city is going to rest with our public, our citizens, and our neighbors that we share borders with. The governor just mentioned there was an outpouring of love, empathy, and willingness to help. There is no doubt, question, or reservation. Let me just say this, and I will be brief. There's one thing that is most evident that has come about. We in Virginia Beach are a city of heroes. We have heroes with our military. We have many members of our public that help and save lives. But most of all, let me commend the officers, the people that ran into a building with an active shooter shooting 45 caliber bullets and saved many people. Without doubt, question or reservation, Virginia Beach is a city of heroes. And the strength of Virginia Beach are the people of Virginia Beach. And there's no doubt that going forward that we will define ourselves as a city with love and compassion for those neighbors that we lost and their families. And we're not going to just do this over the next couple of weeks. This is going to be a long-term thing. This is Virginia Beach. Thank you. And at this point, I'd like to you know, bring up Chief Cervera. From the police end, we um, do not have a lot of additional information to give at this time other than um, FBI has, the Federal Bureau of Investigation has taken over the evidence recovery portion of this. Their ERT has responded. They've come as a group of 40 individuals assisting the city of Virginia Beach. 
Um, it is a time-consuming, meticulous process. It is not what you see on TV. It is not what you see in the movies. It's a time-consuming process, and um, they, have, they have taken that assignment on um, magnificently. They're doing an absolute fantastic job inside of the building. Our evidence, uh, forensic evidence techs are also inside the building and will be there for quite some time. We have that to be able to um, give out. The other thing is that, as the manager said earlier, we, are, um, we will have members of the Virginia Beach Police Honor Guard and Fire Department Honor Guard teams assigned to the families. We want to make sure that they have liaisons to just about everything that they need at this point. And we want everyone, we want the family members and the friends to know that we are behind them 100%, that this isn't something that's going to happen, and then suddenly we're just going to go back to business. But at this time, I'd like to call the um, regional special agent in charge of the ATF to come forward and give us a few words on where we are with um, the weapons that have been recovered and the evidence that they are uh, attempting to obtain from those weapons, sir. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon. On behalf of the men and women at ATF, our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families. Uh, working with Virginia Beach Police Department, State Police, and our partners with the FBI, we have identified two weapons used in the shooting yesterday. Uh, both weapons are 45 caliber pistols. Uh, one was purchased in 2016, one was purchased in 2018. Both pistols were purchased by the shooter, and all indications are they were purchased legally. In addition, ATF agents assisted local police with the search warrant at the shooter's residence. Two other firearms were recovered from that location. Uh, one of the two has been identified, and of the one that has been identified, it also was legally purchased by the shooter. At this time, we're also working with our law enforcement partners to uh, look at the ballistics from the weapons uh, discharge and also uh, our ballistic network of NIBIN to see if they correspond with any other shootings. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. The only final bit of information I can give at this time is um, there, has, there have been some questions Concerning the timeline, um, how long did the shootout incur? What was the time that the officers first res responded and, res and arrived on scene? We'll put all that together, but we do want to interview the officers to get some specifics. Um, you know, the, the computer dispatch timeline is one piece of information, but we're uh, interviewing the officers to get the rest of that information. And again, I want you to understand that in a situation such as this, these officers need a little bit of time to decompress before we begin to ask them specific questions about this uh, absolute horrific crime scene and this intense uh, firefight shootout that they had with the suspect. So I'll have more information on that tomorrow. <coughs> Julie. Thank you. I'm Julie Hill. I'm the communications director for the city. I've been here for four years. Um, and in that four years, I can tell you that this is an incident that speaks to really the heart and soul of this city that I've come to call home. Um, but make no mistake, we are a heartbroken city because we have lost 12 people who did nothing more than come to work yesterday and expect to go home and they were not able. We're just about a day into this event and so we've got a lot of plans to make. We have 12 funerals to help these funerals, the, the families plan. And that's the work that we're about to uh, get underway starting today. We're meeting with the families. We're focusing on the steps that we're going to be taking for memorials. And this community has already started to step up in that regard as well. So in addition to a memorial service that the city is planning for Thursday evening that everyone is invited to attend at Rock Creek Church, we'll have more information on that. We're hearing about other vigils that are being planned for, for the community. Some started today. They'll be taking place over uh, the course of the week. So if anybody does have incidents um, and events and vigils that they would like us to include in a listing, you can email those to us at news at vbgov. We'll be glad to add those to our website. The vigil that we've got planned, the memorial service is Thursday at uh, the 6th. It's at 7 o'clock and it's going to be a remembrance ceremony for those 12 victims who lost their lives in the shooting yesterday. It will be at Rock Creek Rock Church, which is at 640 Kempsville Road here in Virginia Beach. And it is open to the public, and we encourage anyone who um, wants to share in that to be able to attend. 
one of the most important responsibilities I have today is to make a correction to um, the name of an individual. We, we mistook the middle initial for Joshua Hardy. We put it in as an A and it should be an O. So I want to make sure that that's corrected. If you pulled the file down from our website, you now have that corrected information. But I didn't want to leave today without giving you that information. Um, there, there are a lot of people who have wanted to drop by memorials and flowers and candles, and there is a designated area to be able to, for us to receive those, and that's at the flag right outside of the, right in front of the public, the public safety, the police department, which is on Princess Anne Road. Building 11, it's to the left of the flagpole. There is the flag right there, and that's where um, we're going to hope that people will be able to gather and, and share those uh, mementos. And finally, the amount of support that we've received has been um, incredible. We're immensely grateful for the support that we've received, and we hope that you'll continue to extend that to the, our families and the rest of the employees. You want to know more, I, I've been hearing from you that you want to know more about each of the individuals, and I think as we are able to work with the families, that's going to become easier as the days go by. So if you'll just give us a little bit of time, I think you're going to find an awful lot of people who want to tell you everything about these people that they want you to know. Mm -hmm. What questions do you have for us this Any afternoon? Update on the injuries? I'm sorry? Update on the injuries? We have, uh, there, there's not really been much change on them from, uh, from earlier. We had three critical and one in fair condition. What is the officer's, what is his condition? He's been um, treated and released. Remember, you, you might remember that the, the chief had indicated that it was his best that saved him um, yesterday. In the, the last news conference, we heard that the suspect was an employee, but we're hearing from federal law enforcement uh, sources that he was indeed fired. So can we please get a clarification? Can you please let me know what federal law enforcement agency gave you that information? I can just tell you my sources at uh, federal law enforcement. Okay. We're, 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 we're hearing that he was fired. Okay, you, you, can, you can correct your source. That's not correct. It's not correct. Yes, sir. He was not fired. That's what I, yes, sir. He's not been fired. Chief, can you tell us when you entered the building? Sorry? Can you tell us when you entered the building? Where? Where? Uh, Approximately, well, I don't know exactly what time he entered the building. I know the time that we got the first call for service, shortly after 4 p.m. And again, I will, one, one moment. I will have the exact timeline as to when the first call came out. I can tell you that the call was dispatched within a timely fashion, that the first officers arrived within minutes, and I will give you the exact moment when we engage with the suspect after that. I hold it. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Did he go to work? I, I don't have that information, and we will get that at a later time. Chief, have you interviewed co-workers, and have they given you any information on possible motive, any events that might have led to this or prompted it? We have interviewed co-workers, and I'm not at liberty to discuss what their, their information was. We had a question over here, sir. Uh, just a question for the governor, considering there is now uh, an open question about the motive. Considering the motive is unclear right now, what do you say to government employees fearful of returning to work because they're unsure if they'll be safe? Well, I, you know, this was a horrific tragedy. And, uh, you know, right now uh, we want to let everybody know that they are safe. Uh, there are accommodations being made uh, to continue our government services here in, in the city of Virginia Beach. Uh, but until we gather more information, uh, there's really not a whole lot more to say. But uh, they, they are safe at this time. Could we get the name of the ATF official who spoke? For members of our community, citizens who work for our city need their support. Now, when I say you need the support, that's a very nebulous thing to, to be able to say. We need an outpouring of support. At, at these vigils that will happen, come to the vigil, show up at the vigil. For our police officers, um, this, this is an absolute horrific event this of, of unbelievable proportions. But, you know, police officers go to work every day, and they do things not at this level, but they do things sometimes with, with a, an amount of intensity every day. Police officers put themselves in harm's way 
every day for people they've never met, people they have no connection to, and for people they will never see again. So to the citizens of our city, I would like to see the support for the police officers. Remember, as I talked earlier today, we trained recently on, on such an incident as this with our fire and EMS representatives. Give them the support they also need. Um, nobody gets into public service and public safety for, the, for, for, for pay and benefits. They get into it for the intrinsic value of what they give back to their community. Pharrell Williams recently said during something in the water, let's show the young people we have their back. So this is the time we need to say to our cops, let's show them we have your back. Chief, 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 Chief you said before that there was a, um, that the shooter appeared to be a shooting indiscriminately, yet any number of the victims worked in the precise division where this gentleman went to work every day. Can you reconcile those two statements to me? We're working through that. What I mean by indiscriminately was as he came upon someone, that's when he took action. So we are working through the actual um, timeline and the actual event, what event took place when, and we'll try and piece all of that together as best as we could. We're also hearing from employees uh, for the city that there's some sense that he had some friction or difficulty at work. Can you confirm that there was some past behavior that led folks <coughs> to believe that he might not necessarily have been? I can't confirm that until those who are, are interviewing everyone can give us a complete report as to what led up to this particular incident. Chief, have you reviewed his electronic trail, cell phones, texts, computers at home, anything like that? And if so, have they given you any indication of the possibility? Okay. As investigators, they review everything they possibly can review. Once that's all put together in a documented uh, investigative file, it'll all be reviewed and determine what led up to this incident. One, one, one second, so. Uh, again, that it will all come out once we get all of the in, in, intel work, background investigation work done. We've only been 24 hours into this, and the first piece of any investigation is to make sure that we have the crime scene completely uh, reviewed, which is what we've just completed. So that's, it's work, the detectives are in that phase. No, I'm, we're, we're going to hold off on where weapons were found. Um, so one, one moment. I, I, that might not satisfy you right now, but I said as we could give information, we will release it. Yes, sir. Chief, when government offices do reopen, is there any plan to bolster security with metal detectors or security personnel? We have security plans in all of our buildings, except I have to say this. That's a government employee who walked into the building. So if we're going to go to metal detectors for all employees coming in, I will defer that to um, higher city authorities on how the buildings can be reconfigured. Can yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? The timeline, you said you're ready to release the timeline. I, I said I expect to release it tomorrow. Yeah. I just, and again, it, it's not just the time that, that we have posted on a computer dispatch, because that's the time officers call in. But in a situation like this, they're not thinking to call in exactly what they're doing, they're engaged, and, the, and then they're calling it in. Chief, do, you have any idea how, do you have any idea how many people were in Building 2 at the time? I do not. Uh, do you have a sense of, given the timely nature of the police response, how important that was in terms of saving lives? Well, that, I, I, I can give you from 44 years of being a police officer anecdotal. That was extremely important because the longer it takes, the more carnage we would have had. So those officers got there as quick as they could. They engaged with him as quick as they could. And um, they were able to neutralize him as, as quick as they possibly could. And I think in the overall scheme of things, that helped save a number of lives in that building. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. What employees were required to come in Monday morning, and where are you relocating the services? Who we're having those conversations right now, and we'll have specific information that will be sent out to employees once the final decisions are made. We are 
absolutely looking at some modifications of the schedule but how we're going to work that out for the logistics of some of the essential services that's the piece that we're going to work on we'll have it out as soon as we can okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. any response from the shooter's parents we got a report that someone talked to the parents did they offer any kind of sympathy condolences i am not aware of any receiving <coughs> anything from the city side the um, individuals that, that spoke with the parents um, did not report back what the parents exactly had to say. We will interview them for the investigative purposes of this. Chief, were there additional items found at his residence that are pertinent to the investigation, specifically the one with the three security cameras that he had pointing out two windows of his apartment? Can you tell us anything about those or any other items that are pertinent? I cannot release any of that information from the search warrant at this time. I'll take one more question. Chief, can you tell us, did he live by himself? Was he at the house with anyone, any acquaintances, family? Did he live by himself with you? Who do I have up? Deputy Chief Gallagher. Right here. Do you he lived alone? The information we have is that he lived alone. And sir, since you also raised your hand at the same time, you're the last question. Yeah, if you could speak a little bit tactically about the, the audience. <coughs> Was it what you guys trained? Did it work out more or less to, to what you guys have been practicing? Very good question. Thank you. We train extensively. We train extensively on, on uh, firearms tactics. We train extensively on self-defense tactics. We train extensively on de-escalation tactics. Now, in this particular case, there was no de-escalation tactics. He was firing his weapon. As soon as he saw the officers, he engaged firing his weapon at, weapons at the officers. So we train in what we call close quarter battle. There's only a, that's the best term that I can give you, and that is um, officers position themselves to take the tactical advantage in order to use deadly force. And I have to really accentuate that. They're the only ones in society who are allowed to use deadly force on an individual, and, and they take that very seriously. In this particular case, they, re they reverted back to their tactics, to their training, and I have to tell you that they reverted back to their, their um, self-discipline that our officers have because they learned that in training and they reverted back to the discipline that we have as a police agency in order to return fire as tactically and efficiently as possible and that's what happened so thank you sir and, and more or less uh, how many times was the shooter shot i do not have that specific information and i don't think i'm going to release that until after the investigation is completed so as i said that will be the last question how long will the fbi I just said that was the last question, but considering you're local, <laughs> we'll let you ask that. Um, I can't give you the exact number of hours or days, but we're going to be there until that investigation is completed. They, they have teams going in and out. They are rehabilitating themselves, i.e. with food and water. They're, um, they're being housed locally. So in police work, we, we stay until the job is completed. Thank you. Because of the chief's desire to release the timeline for tomorrow we're not going to pin the time in the morning we really want to see when we can have that for you so as just as soon as we have that indication we'll send out the alert and let you know and the best place for you as you know um, to follow is on the Virginia Beach Police Department Twitter feed we'll post the time of tomorrow's briefing just as soon as we have it thanks very much for showing up today